Climate change. Climate change is the planet's version of genital herpes. For three reasons. Like herpes, climate change makes a lot of people uncomfortable, so they avoid talking about it. Trump. Secondly, like herpes, we caught climate change from doing dirty, naughty things. And thirdly, like herpes, there's no cure. The planet's caught it, we need to adapt to it. So have you all thought, how will you adapt to climate change? Now, you probably all have a vegan friend that's told you, well, if you stop eating meat, we'll cure climate change. And yes, changing your diet is one way you can actually reduce your carbon emissions. But you also got to think about where your fresh food's grown. For us in Sydney, a lot of that's grown west of the Blue Mountains, which actually will become more drier with more drought. While on our coastlines, next to a warming ocean with increased evaporation, we're set to get more rainfall. So doesn't it make sense that we grow food on our coastlines, close to where most people live in Australia? Could we not grow food in an urban environment where people could walk to their food sources? Well, we can. But to do that, you'll have to utilise our space better. And for that, you need to get over your addiction to manicured lawn. <laughs> Think about how much lawn there actually is in Sydney. There's a lot, right? And how much is it actually worth? Well, right now with medium house prices in Sydney rising to over $1.1 million. That means one square metre of lawn is worth roughly $4,000. Would you let your dog shit on a $4,000 rug? No, but you do on your lawn. Now, can't we use these spaces more cost effectively? Yes, converting lawns to food will take time, effort and money. But so does maintaining a lawn. And wouldn't it be nice to wake up on a Sunday and not hear the sound of a lawnmower or whippersnipper? Wouldn't that be nice? Now, what about people that live in apartments? I know you're thinking, well, I don't have a lawn. Well, lucky for you, Sydney has thought ahead. We've actually set aside 5,000 hectares of the most manicured, pristine lawn we have, conveniently located around the city, our golf courses. Now, if Sydney is going to take adapting to climate change and securing our food for the future seriously, we have to start thinking of converting these golf courses into sustainable, organic community farms. Now, I emphasise the word farms and not gardens because we have community gardens and they're great places to learn how to grow food, but they're not big enough and they're not productive enough to feed a large population. Golf courses could be, but of course, if we take them, we're going to piss off golfers. Oh, you can't take our golf courses. We've been playing golf for a hundred years here. You can't have them. All right. We'll take nine holes. That still leaves you with a three-hour game. No, I'm used to playing 18 holes. Play the nine holes twice. No, that's not a challenge. I want to play a different hole every time. You want a challenge? Play nine holes with the right hand, then play nine holes with the left hand. Seriously, people. If you are going to want to spend your retirement in the sun with your mates, stick in hand, hacking at the ground, try gardening. <laughs> and I've got people who give you a hand. All you young people in the audience that does F45 or CrossFit training at 6am, stop paying someone to yell at you to move random heavy objects back and forth. <laughs> it's a waste of energy. Get out to the community farm. I'll give you a shovel and you can move two tonnes of chicken shit before work. <laughs> And if you want a challenge, do it with a spoon. <laughs> now, we need to make sure we save these spaces before developers come in and build more concrete cells for an increasingly debt-enslaved population. Community farms could be spaces that generations come together, where we socialise without alcohol and without gambling, where we can teach each other, grow together and play together. Now, some of you might be just looking at me and thinking, Oh, this is just some hipster with a crazy dream of sustainable Sydney that grows 50% of its food. You know what I think's crazy? A society that has allowed a supermarket to teach our kids bananas come wrapped in plastic. And I'm insane? Seriously. We're apes, people. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Yet somehow you've all forgotten your connection to nature. Growing your own food will allow you to reconnect with nature and embrace the earth again. The time is right now to start thinking what future do you want to live in for Sydney? Are you ready to adapt to climate change? 
The power to do so is simply in your hands. So go out there, learn how to grow food and spread this message. And together, let's ignite the idea for a more sustainable Sydney. Captain Planet once said, the power is yours. So pick up a shovel and decide to grow your own future. Thank you. Thank you.